Tips and Traps. I'm your host, Andy Serlin, flying solo this week. It is July 8th, second week of July, just a few more weeks at Belmont left. And we're going to start out with a three, three races in the first segment, two in the second segment. In the first segment, we've got a couple of baby races we ran last week. But we're going to start out with a turf race, and it's a mile and an eighth turf race. It's an overnight stake race, the Don Jack. And this is a race, like many of these mile and an eighth turf races, where dynamics tell the story, not necessarily the horses in it. The heavy favorite was the six, Pinkney Hill, who uh, is on the outside, and farther out from him is Golden Mexico in the, perp in the pink silks. Pinkney Hill inside of him. Now, Pinkney Hill, very much compromised because his running style is to come from behind. Golden Mexico is a horse with speed. In fact, he had runoff speed last time he ran in a stake at Arlington Park. They harnessed him in this race, and as you could see going in the first turn, he was right outside the lead, and this was a very, very slow pace. And the horse on the lead here, Sal the Barber, ends up wiring the field, as you see happen so often in these mile and eighth turf races. And Golden Mexico, I understand not wanting to get him to run off like he did the time before. On the other hand, because of rating in here and being three wide around the racetrack, he never, ever had a chance to get in the race and be part of the race. And though he finishes last in here, I think he's a horse that in the right situation next time bears a lot of watching. Now Pinkney Hill's behind him, and Pinkney Hill is already moving up, and he's closer to the pace than probably he prefers to be, and it's just because of the dynamics of this race and way too many of these mile and eighth races we run on the inner turf course. There you see Golden Mexico has now moved up, and he's getting one of those trips where it's just a sort of indecisive half up half back and I understand the situation but it's never going to work out for him and because of the way the race is being run you've got Pinkney Hill who's also like I said closer than he probably wants to be and now he's making this semi premature four wide move there's nothing you can do it's not a rider's fault it's a, it's the fault of the dynamics of the race a race like this does not set up for a horse like him you need to have I'm not saying a blistering pace but a fair pace Sal the Barber, Ramon Dominguez, just take advantage of the situation in here and set this slow pace. And this race was essentially over when they hit the first turn. And I'll be honest, Pinkney Hill, a horse that I'm not certain how far he ultimately will want to go. I know he's an AP Indy. On the other hand, he's a half to a horse, a very good turfman in an English colony. I thought Pinkney Hill did a very good job getting up for second, albeit a distant second. But this was a race where the dynamics told the story in the way the race was run. The slow pace, the horse on the lead, having the easy lead, having the inside. And horses like Pinkney Hill and Golden Mexico never had a fair chance. Obviously, Pinkney Hill is the more high-profile horse. I wouldn't be surprised to see him in the Hall of Fame stakes at Saratoga. Fairly run race. I think he's a horse with real ability. But Golden Mexico is one I'm very interested to see where he shows up next because he has dirtied up for him from this race. And I still believe, based on the first race he ran this country, he is better than he showed in this race, a race he had no chance in. Now we'll turn our attention to two-year-olds. And we ran two-year-old races on Wednesday and Thursday. The first one was for Phillies. And all but one, actually, had and were first-time starters. The horse who won the race was the only horse that had experience. But I thought a couple of interesting things here. You see the one on the inside sort of breaking a little slowly, a little uncomfortable. That was Rose Catherine, a first-time starter for Todd Fletcher that took a ton of money and ended up going off eight to five, a dollar seventy-five to a dollar. Slipping between in those those orange and, and yellow silks is Storm in a Prayer, a horse that will show after this race to head on up. Has some real trouble to start. That was a first-time starter from Jimmy Toner. Now, Jimmy Toner is 0 for 7 team with two-year-old first-time stars in sprint races on the dirt in the last five years. So he's not really one that has them cranked up. But this horse really was sort of cranked up for this race. But I think he ran well in here. The trouble at the start and the way the race was run. Now, Rose Catherine, you saw in the back of the pack, sort of slipping in between horses. And you can see her steadying a bit between. I think that trouble's a little overrated. But Todd Pletcher is another trainer over the last couple of years who has not been winning in the same situation with two-year-old firsters in dirt sprints. So maybe this one will need a race. Now, Storm in a Prayer, I thought of all of them, though, ran the best race because she gutted out the whole way. The winner ended up having a perfect trip, and as you'll see, the second place finisher, Magic Appeal, will come from well out of it to finish second. Now, I think Magic Appeal is one of those horses that will get bet, probably in Saratoga, its next start, based on this sort of nice-looking late run in this race. For my money, this race just collapsed at the end. I don't want any part of that horse. The horse I want is Storm in a Prayer. And we'll watch the head on here, and it's not significant significant trouble, but I think it's enough. When you consider the speed he had, you see how the horse inside and outside both came in and sandwiched him a little and bumped him. And considering the speed he has, 
probably cost him a little, you know, maybe a length or so in, in getting his feet under him at the start. He's got real speed and he's got real ability because to run like that, I think, for a first-time starter, for a trainer that normally doesn't have him cranked up, it's a good chance Storm in a Prayer is one that will do well down the road. Rose Catherine, we'll see. I think Todd Pletcher's horses probably will run better, his two-year-olds, in their second starts. But I'm not really sure this one did any running whatsoever. And I'll take a sort of negative view when we go to Saratoga. Then we'll now we'll go to Thursday and we'll look at the Colt counterpart of that maybe maiden race. And the first two finishers are really the only ones I think that are worth discussing here. The one Bulls and Bears comes out well, the rider urging them. Right outside of them, but partially obscured, is the two be discreetly mine. Now Bulls and Bears will win this race. Discreetly mine is going to finish second here. And discreetly mine, of course, is in those sort of familiar silks that Stan Huff for the, the Rob Sham silks. And these are the silks of this horse's half brother, Discreet Cat. What I thought was interesting about discreetly mine is his sire's mine shaft who really does not have two-year-olds ready to go going five five and a half furlongs at start but this one is different i mean this is just a tremendous dam where it seems like all her horses can run discreetly mine is battling it out between horses now bulls and bears had steadied early in this race clearly cost him a length or so but he steadied into a perfect trip here but what i thought was interesting and bulls and bulls and bears is caught behind horses a little bit as you can see here and while obviously ideally alan garcia would like to angle around, hope the horse on the far outside drifts off and he can get out. That's not going to happen here. And what he has to do, because he wants to get him out, you see there, he just can't. He realizes he has to go for it between horses. Now, a lot of horses, especially two-year-olds, first-time stars, aren't going to burst through a hole like that, aren't going to show the courage to persevere like this one did. This horse ran like a very mature horse. And even though he had a very good trip with a little trouble, I thought he showed a lot coming through on the inside. But ultimately, discreetly mine is the one that really ran the better race because he fought it out tooth and nail the whole way and just lost by about a head or a neck in here. Now, I expect Bulls and Bears will be in the two-year-old stake opening week at Saratoga. Could be a strong contender. Discreetly mine, probably going to stick for a maiden race before heading to stake races. He is going to be a short price, but a very hard horse to beat in his next start. That does it for this part of Trips and Traps. But once again, we want to give you that email address. It's tripsandtraps at nairainc.com. We love to hear your thoughts. Give us some ideas. Keep them coming. We'll be back with the second part.